Hello and welcome to Aviation Buff. Today we are featuring breathtaking skills and precision done by the brave pilots and crew members of aerial refueling squadrons. Their immense hard work keeps our Air Force afloat and ever ready for any long mission without needing to land. This video is a tribute to those brave airmen and women. Let's roll then. This is Northrop Grumman X-47B. This unmanned aircraft is performing autonomous aerial refueling, which means there is no pilot to maneuver it during air-to-air -air refueling. While flying off the coast of Maryland and Virginia, the X-47B connected to an Omega K-707 tanker aircraft and received over 4,000 pounds of fuel using the Navy's probe and drogue method. Now if we are talking about the probe and drogue method, other aircraft support this aerial refueling technique. An HH-60 is getting aerial refueling from a C-130. The probe and drogue refueling method employs a flexible hose that trails from the tanker aircraft. The drogue is a fitting resembling a shuttlecock attached at its narrow end. The drogue stabilizes the hose in flight and provides a funnel to aid insertion of the receiver aircraft probe into the hose. The receiver, which is an F-35 here, has a probe. It is a rigid protruding or pivoted retractable arm placed on the aircraft's nose or fuselage to make the connection. Most modern versions of the probe are usually designed to be retractable and are retracted when not in use, particularly on high-speed aircraft like F-35 Lightning II. The Marine Aerial Refueler Transport Squadron pilot is now preparing for F-A-18 Hornet with Marine Fighter Attack Squadron. The crew members are on high alert and keeping an eye on the aircraft maneuvers as it makes few fly pass. Also, the video team is ready for close shots. It needs years of precision and skill for aerial refueling. The optimal approach is from behind and below, not level with, the drogue. Because the drogue is relatively light, typically soft canvas webbing and subject to aerodynamic forces, it can be pushed around by the bow wave of approaching aircraft, exacerbating engagement even in smooth air. This F-A-18 Hornet is going to get refueled through the drogue method too. The air is turbulent, and it's keeping the pilot of both aircraft busy to keep the steadiness intact. At the end of the probe is a valve that is closed until it mates with the drogue's forward internal receptacle, after which, it opens and allows fuel to pass from the tanker to the receiver. The challenge is multiplied and way different when it's an MV-22 Osprey. Its forward-spinning prop rotor blades must be distant and away from the dangling drogue. The pilot must maneuver from behind of the drogue and keep the nose in the middle to avoid unnecessary aerodynamic force to the hose. Air-to-air -air refueling plays an important role in Air Force. Such refueling allows fighter aircraft to stay in the air for longer periods without needing to land. Tactical locations are often long distances from supporting airfields, which means aircraft may require refueling mid-flight. This gives an important edge to the Air Force during various intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, or even attack and combat missions. Now we're gonna talk about the flying boom method. You can see the boom coming down while a U.S. Air Force F-15E Strike Eagle approaches a KC-10 extender. The flying boom is a rigid, telescoping tube with movable flight control surfaces. A boom operator on the tanker aircraft extends this flying boom and inserts into a receptacle on the receiving aircraft. All boom-equipped tankers, for example KC-135 Strato Tanker, KC-10 Extender, KC-46 Pegasus, have a single boom and can refuel one aircraft at a time with this mechanism. The flying boom is attached to the rear of the tanker aircraft. The attachment is gimbaled, allowing the boom to move with the receiver aircraft. The boom contains a rigid pipe to transfer fuel. The fuel pipe ends in a nozzle with a flexible ball joint. The nozzle mates to the receptacle in the receiver aircraft during fuel transfer. A poppet valve in the end of the nozzle prevents fuel from exiting the tube until the nozzle properly mates with the receiver's refueling receptacle. Once properly mated, toggles in the receptacle engage the nozzle, holding it locked during fuel transfer. Not just the helicopters and fighter aircrafts, but even large Air Force carriers and transporters can be subjected to aerial refueling as well. A U.S. Air Force B-52H Stratofortress from Barksdale Air Force Base LA prepares to be refueled by a U.S. Air Force KC-10 extender during a bomber task force mission. 
The bomber deployment showcases the U.S. military's commitment to regional security and demonstrates the capabilities of a short-notice, rapid deployment of assets. The B-52 is a long-range, heavy bomber. To complete an aerial refueling, the tanker and receiver aircraft rendezvous, flying in formation. The receiver moves to a position behind the tanker, within safe limits of travel for the boom, aided by director lights or directions, radioed by the boom operator. Once in position, the operator extends the boom to make contact with the receiver aircraft. That's all for Aerial Refueling Documentary, as of today. Thanks for watching, and yes, if you liked, then please don't forget to subscribe and share. Also please explore other great contents in the channel.